today's conversation. In the know, on the go. This is On the Scene on 938 Now. Now, most of us want to live to, oh, I don't know, a hundred years old and beyond. Talk about ambition. Uh, but how many of us actually manage to achieve that feat? Well, not very many, but most of those who do make it live in Okinawa, where you'll find the world's highest occurrence of centenarians and people who are, you know, close. And these are the subjects of a photo exhibition, the second from a Singapore-based French photographer, José Jelon, now on till 30th May at the Fullerton Hotel, Singapore. It's called Longevity Okinawa. And the exhibition uh, features locals of Okinawa aged between 89 and 100 years old. And José joins us now on the scene to chat more. José, thanks for joining us here on 93 and Now. Hello, thank you for, for having me uh, today. And when did you first become fascinated with Okinawa and the people, in particular the centenarians who live there? Well, actually, uh, when, I, when I read about it, it was like 12 years ago. And at the time, I was uh, not a photographer. I was uh, only doing a sport uh, as an athlete. And I read an article about uh, their health and their longevity, and I found it like very interesting. And this, I always have uh, uh, this in mind since uh, many years. And when I become photographer, I'm always, uh, since this time, I'm always looking for a new subject to cover. And uh, after my first documentary about the women divers in Jeju Island, I venture for this, uh, this subject. And so you traveled to Okinawa to find these subjects. Um, were they easy to, well, well, were they easy or tough to find? But when I started this project, it was in 2017, like uh, two years ago. And initially, before to to go to, to Okinawa, I tried to contact few people uh, by internet and social media, but we didn't uh, receive any uh, answer. And with my wife, when we went to, to Okinawa, we started to to ask people on the street to get uh, try to get contact in the different place. And actually, each time we are um, we are talking to somebody, we always ask if they know anybody like around 90 years old to over 100 years old. This was one of the main challenges on the first, uh, first trip. And also another difficulty could be like the, the translation. But uh, weeks after weeks, I, I got more and more contact and people uh, uh, really uh, helped me for, for, this, for this documentary. I see. So besides the language uh, barrier there, was, uh, was it challenging, you know, convincing your subject, uh, subjects to let you shoot them? Or is this something that they're quite used to, you know, given their fame and all? Um, I think the, the, the project or, or this uh, work on the, on the, the longevity of uh, people in Okinawa, I believe there is already a lot of maybe uh, like interview maybe done by a local, but uh, for to have a foreigner for them is maybe like something new, and uh, some of the Okinawa like, were very excited uh, to be to be photographed and share the, the, uh, their story. Uh, other one was more like uh, shy. And even sometime, like maybe one hour before we, we reach to the place, uh, they start to be uh, maybe a bit stressed, uh, a bit uh, feel like sick, because I think they were just anxious uh, to, have, to have somebody coming to, to photograph them. But in general, like, they are quite, uh, quite easy and very, uh, very welcoming and very interested to be, uh, to be photographed. And, and what, were your, what were your encounters with them like? I mean, what are their daily lives like and what were they doing like when you first met them? Uh, it would be very different for each of them. Some of them, they live with their family, so they are doing like different things, like maybe they are cooking, uh, they are just chatting. Uh, other people I met, they, they do gardening every, uh, every day, and they are very active. Other ones, they will just go to, to the center, like a daily center, and they will play music, they will dance uh, all together. And actually, I have also a very interesting uh, um, story. The first person I tried to photograph in Okinawa, it was at uh, a daily uh, care. And uh, when I started to, to set up my uh, light and my backdrop, uh, I took my camera and she started to cry. And I think she, she felt like very emotional, like somebody like from another country come to, to photograph her and uh, have interest in her because uh, I believe like she don't receive so many uh, uh, visits from her, her family. And uh, it was very emotional for her and she refused to be, to be photographed. 
And later on, when I photograph some of uh, uh, the other person in the, the same uh, same location, she came back later on and she asked for to be a photograph, and she was very smiley, making like the peace sign, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Right, and 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 what was your approach like to shooting your subjects? Uh, do you let them kind of like be spontaneous and random in their natural habitats, and how much of the pictures were actually deliberately sort of engineered? Um, my, uh, for this project, I, I went two years ago, and I went also this year. And uh, the first time was the most uh, difficult because actually I have nothing to show uh, to show them what kind of uh, picture I'm doing. On my second trip, uh, I have like the, a little magazine, a little book for what I already showed the, the, the first time, and I could show them exactly what kind of uh, pictures I, I want uh, pose. And after, on my second trip, it was very natural to make them pose. Uh, and, uh, but the first time was a little bit more challenging because first they don't understood exactly my, uh, my project. And some of the day I have no translator, so I have to do everything with, like, my, uh, to show with my hand or to, to, to explain them uh, exactly, like, what kind of pose I'm, I'm looking for. Yeah. And also for a documentary, it was my first time that, that I tried to, to, to make in a studio style. Usually when I do a photography documentary, I photograph people doing their activities or doing their daily life. And this time around, it was like a really pose with a, all like a studio setup, yeah. So uh, what, was, uh, what was the easiest uh, photo, uh, e uh, easiest and quickest to, uh, photo to shoot? <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I will I will go back to my second I think second trip because um, I was used about using my backdrop my la, my lighting setup and uh, after maybe four or five uh, snap I know I already have the the photograph and on my second trip too when I've been to few um, daily care some of the some of the elderly people like they were very uh, excited about the the photograph and. Uh, like after a few seconds, they already like have the right pose, the right smile. Everything was right to take the pictures. So my second trip was very easy. All right. So show them exactly what you need them to do. <laughs> yes, exactly. What about the longest and the toughest to shoot? Um... I think well, maybe not the longest, but one of the ladies I photographed uh, on my first trip in uh, in Naha City, uh, she, she had a reputation for being very active, and uh, and she has been a feature in few media in the past because she's doing a gym almost every day, and she's 99. Uh, she can do uh, like st stuff on the on the on the ground like maybe many uh, younger people we don't do like squat, uh, stretching, and you know, all this kind of uh, exercise. And uh, usually before I do photograph, I try to chat with people like a few minutes because I don't want to be uh, too opportunist uh, and go to the place and just shoot the pictures and leave. So usually I stay a few, maybe we spend a bit of time to ask a few questions just to know more about, uh, about them. And uh, when I just sit, I ask like one of my first questions said like, oh, I heard you do a lot of exercise. And directly she stand up and start to do all the exercise, uh, exercise. <laughs> stretch on the floor everything and I tried to ask her to stop because all my gear was still on my backpack and uh, nothing was set up and she didn't stop she was not listening she was just continuing to do all the all exercise and uh, actually I became like after a few minutes I was the one like sweating because I was uh, quite uh, rushing to, to be to be ready for it Oh my! <laughs> it would have been great if you, you, you capture you managed to capture that. But you you did manage to capture some of uh, the, uh, of of her. Which is which is this picture that we can actually see of her? Oh, I have uh, uh, for for my first trip. Uh, all my photographs are in black and white because it was the uh, mood and the tone I, I wanted. And for my second trip, it was like uh, I used a different camera. That's why I photograph in uh, in color. But for her. Uh, I, um, I have black and white pictures, but this one are not in the exhibition because I already photographed uh, like a, a large number of people. Like my first trip was 15 people, on my second trip it was 27. So for the exhibition, I could not uh, feature everybody. But on my website, it's possible to to see her. Yeah. Sure. So tell us more about this exhibition. Then that's ongoing right now at the Fullerton Hotel. It starts today, right? Uh, actually, yeah, we launched it on the 18th, and mm. it's open until the 30th of uh, May. Okay. And it's my second time I'm doing a solo exhibition at the Fullerton. The first time was almost three years ago. 
And this time around, uh, we have uh, in total like 21 pixel images uh, to be uh, to be exhibited, with different uh, format, like different size. Some of the pictures are printed in giant size. It's like over one meter eighty uh, centimeters. It's very impressive because you also have a lot of details. And uh, I can reach this kind of quality uh, for two reasons. One is because I'm using a very high uh, quality printer and, uh, and paper and canvas from uh, Epson. And also I'm using uh, a medium format from Fujifilm, uh, which is uh, 51 megapixel. And when you go close to the print, it's very interesting to see all, uh, all this detail and sharpness. And uh, for, for the first time also, I'm doing uh, a short film documentary. And uh, you can also vision this, uh, this film uh, on the monitor at the, the Fulton uh, Hotel. And, uh, of course, uh, the secret to the Okinawans' longevity is something that many people are obsessed about. So, you know, during the time that you were there, was this something that, did you manage to get any insights into this? Was this something that you were interested in looking into? Um, uh, before to go to buy, uh, to do the documentary, I already have few uh, few ideas in mind what they are living so long. And uh, my first thought was uh, the food. And uh, yes, the food is a big part of the longevity because the way how they cook it and uh, exactly what they are eating. Uh, we need to know, like most of them, like when they live in the countryside, they all own their own garden. So what they, they cultivate uh, there is like all like uh, organic food. Uh, they prepare everything on their own, and there is not so much like like usually Japanese uh, food is reputed for to don't use like so much oil or butter or kind of stuff. So it's very healthy the way or, or they cook. And uh, another point is uh, this one I was very really surprised because I will never expect to see them so so active. Is uh, to be active like they, every day they do some for people who live in the countryside they do gardening or they have a farm. Uh, for people who are already a little bit older, maybe they will take care of their grandchildren or uh, grand great children. And uh, all these activities make them busy and, uh, and always be uh, doing uh, some, it's not sports, but it's like an active life. I think this is a, this is a big part. And I think my biggest uh, surprise was uh, the connection they have between people. Uh, there in Okinawa, they have a very strong connection between uh, their family, I mean between different generations, and also with their, their friends or their, their neighbor. And these people are, I don't, it's very rare to see them like alone. Usually they always live with people, or even if they are alone on their house, they still, uh, they still are very connected with the, with the neighbor or the family come to, to visit them. And I think this is maybe one of the key points that will, can lead them to live longer. Because imagine if you are alone, maybe you maybe you are sad, like nobody is visiting you. Maybe you don't make too much effort of doing things, even for yourself. Like I mean, maybe changing your clothing or just take a shower or cooking for yourself. But if you are with a community of people, every day push you to do some uh, some things. And I think it's one of the key things that makes them uh, living longer. Thank you for speaking with me here on Night Rate Now. Uh, Jose uh, Jelon there, who is a Singapore-based French photographer. You can check out his second exhibition that's on right now. It's called Longevity Okinawa, uh, where he uh, uh, photographs uh, Okinawan locals uh, between the ages of 89 and 100. It's ongoing until the 30th of May at the Fullerton Hotel uh, East Garden Foyer. Thank you.